Over the last several years, long-term venous access devices have become a benchmark for reliable vascular access in patients requiring long-term drug or fluid therapy. Percutaneous placement of catheters often involves accessing vasculature that passes through the narrow costoclavicular space. A review of skeletal structures and vasculature of the upper thorax and neck regions that border and directly affect the costoclavicular space is germane to the understanding of appropriate catheter placement technique. The costoclavicular space is bounded anteriorly by the subclavian muscle, the costoclavicular ligament, and the clavicle, and posteriorly by the anterior scalene muscle and the first rib. The first rib is broad and flat and slopes obliquely downward from its articulation with the first thoracic vertebra to its sternal end. The first rib superior surface is crossed by two shallow grooves which serve as beds for the axillary subclavian vein and the subclavian artery. The grooves are separated by a ridge called the scalene tubercle which serves as the attachment for the anterior scalene muscle. The anterior scalene muscle is the posterior boundary for the axillary subclavian vein. The clavicle articulates medially with the sternal manubrium and the first costal cartilage and is connected to the upper surface of the first rib and its cartilage by a tough fibrous structure called the costoclavicular ligament. The inferior aspect of the clavicle reveals a long shaft that is convex in the medial two-thirds and concave in the lateral third. The medial inferior surface, which lies superior to the first rib, is often a mere ridge. Near the inferior sternal end is a rough depressed area for the attachment of the costoclavicular ligament. The middle third of the inferior aspect of the clavicle contains a long groove. The subclavian muscle is attached to this long groove and stretches to the first rib. Percutaneous placement of a catheter often involves accessing vasculature that passes through the narrow costoclavicular space. When a percutaneous puncture and venous entry is made medial to the midclavicular line, the catheter is more likely to be positioned for some distance alongside the axillary subclavian vein through